guys, how's it going? We've had a little problem with the uh, logging sleigh. Here's we've had a little bit of a blowout. Let me get this all taken apart. We'll take it back to the messy garage and see if we can fix it up. Here's the skis off of the logging sleigh. And you can see a uh, steel runner that's installed on the bottom of the uh, ski that's on the right here. Over on this side, we're missing something. And that's what's worn the plastic out is that the, uh, the runner broke off and then dragging it over uh, a little bit of pavement, crossing roads, has killed off the uh, what's left of the plastic. I've got some uh, plastic barrel that uh, my sometimes cameraman Tom has cut up that we can uh, put on these skis to replace the uh, this isn't the real good plastic. It's like one step down from the really good stuff. So anyways, we'll uh, grind off these rivet heads and punch out the rivet stems. Then I'll show you how I built the skis. What these skis are is a uh, Oh, I'm not sure what the title was, Bob Sled Ski or Bob Ski, Ice House Ski that uh, I ordered in from eBay. And when I ordered them, I think they were like 160 bucks for the pair. I've uh, definitely done some modifications here. You can see this piece of oak that is uh, being held on the middle of the ski. That kind of creates the V shape in the plastic on this side. You see this inch and a half by inch and a half square tubing that we've got stitch welded along the top of the ski to add some additional strength. And then this is an uh, inch and a half, inch, yeah, inch and a half wide uh, strap that I've welded on that uh, provides a ski loop that can be grabbed onto or hooked onto with a strap if we need to uh, tow this thing out of a hole. And uh, generally this thing tows through slush, not too bad. And then as you can see, the skins that I had riveted on with uh, 3 16 steel large head pop rivets. Now that I've got the uh, the rivets out of all of the existing ski skins, I need to get the remnants of the runners off of there and then we can clean everything up, get it ready to go back together again. Here's the ski runner. Now I do have a piece, new piece of rod right here to uh, to make a new runner out of. We'll have to salvage the all thread from the old uh, runners and re-weld them onto the new one. A little bit of wear and tear that's got some surface rust on it. I'm not too worried about that. No worry. Nowhere is near uh, causing any cancer damage to the ski. So that'll be fine. Let me grab a punch. We'll knock all these rivet stems out of here. And uh, then we can start looking at putting the new skins back on. Here are the rivets we're going to be using. Obviously, uh, it's just a reused bag that the uh, shop gave me when I bought them. They're a little on the long side, I think, for what we're looking for, but they should do the job. There's a large head, they're steel. Here's the plastic that we're going to put on there. It's a 55 gallon plastic drum cut uh, oh, about 10 inches wide and uh, then just slice down the side of the barrel. What I'm going to do is uh, get this mounted to the front of the barrel, kind of get it laid out so it can be remounted, then we'll put the wood strip back in and get everything all lined up and put the final rivets in. That is so much easier than trying to uh, do those by hand. Probably going to need a little bit of heat to get that to lay down. I do have a heat gun here somewhere. I was using it. Where'd it go? <laughs> ah, here it is. I'm going to take a little bit of heat. And that gets us into the ballpark of where we need to be. I'll take one of the broken stubs that we have from the other skeg and I'm going to feed that through and use that to align our. Uh, our V block. I 
I've got the ski skins strapped down here with some uh, big vice grip C clamps. Now we need to uh, back drill through some of these holes. And by back drilling, I mean that we've got a uh, the underlying structure and we drill out through the top surface. With the stick mounted in here, we'll be able to drill the, uh, the skag holes in at a later date. I think we can just start putting the, uh, the rivets to this thing. And... Well, I think you guys get the hang of this. I'm gonna continue working my way down the ski here and uh, get these all riveted in place. Then we'll, I'll bring you back when we're going to proceed to the next step. I've got the rivets in all the way along and you can see we've got a nice kind of a curve to the, uh, to the ski skin and we put that uh, skeg down along the bottom. This uh, thing will track quite nice. Right here is the back of the ski. And what I'm thinking of doing is just putting a little bit of a curve on this and will help it uh, hopefully keep a little bit of the curve up when we do this and uh, help with backing up if we have to back up a couple of feet while we're using the sleigh. That gets the basic length cut. Well, it's got the back side of the ski trimmed off and it's not perfect, but I'm not that concerned. It'll work. That's all I care about. We're not trying to win any cosmetic shows here, right there. What I'm going to do is back drill the, uh, the other two mounting points. For these two bolts. And, uh, then we can put it in and we'll verify that that is where the front needs to be as well. got our uh, ski sig egg. I'm going to take this over to the grinder and just put a little bit of a better taper, clean that taper up just a bit more um, because the one on the other ski broke uh, because this bumped into something and sheared off the, uh, the front bolt. Get a little bit more of a bullet nose on that and uh, hopefully that'll help guide it over any rough spots. That's got the skeg remounted, got the nuts reinstalled all the way down. And all we have left to do to get the ski finished is to kind of taper the, uh, the nose of it a little bit. Let me uh, fire up the grinder and we'll uh, buzz those off. That has our skis repaired. We're not completely centered on there. We got two and a half inches on this side and two inches on this side, give or take. I don't really care. Definitely we're gonna have a little better flotation with this and should do a good job for us. Now I gotta rinse and repeat on the other side. So I don't think you guys need to watch that. I'm gonna shut the camera off and just do it all on my own. And then I'll bring you guys back when we get this all put back together. I think we're gonna call this project complete. The ski skin on the left didn't turn out quite as well as the one on the right. Uh, somebody was not following a straight line when they were cutting these out, but I think they'll work just fine as is. We're also missing a rivet down there at the bottom. I ran short and I ended up having to drill a couple off and that left me uh, with not quite enough to finish the project. But we can add that one later, that's not a problem. And uh, I think this is gonna work well. I've got the uh, runner replaced was a bit of a challenge getting everything lined back up um, with that, but 
We made it work. Now we put the log and slate back into service. I don't think I need to add any footage of that on here. You guys have seen the other videos that I've done in the past couple of months with uh, using the log and slate to harvest some deadfall trees out of my buddy's yard. Thanks a lot for stopping by. Greatly appreciate you taking time to watch the video. If you can, leave me one of those thumbs up. Appreciate it if you could give me a subscribe. Getting real close to that 1,000 subscribers I need to get monetized on YouTube. And uh, we'll catch you guys in the next mess. Thanks for watching.